proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled, The Big Blow. Proudly we hail the flexible efficiency of the United States Army's alert preparedness that at home and abroad, in peacetime and during war, reduces the impact of disaster for civilians and the military alike. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Say, young fellow, if you want to be the sort of man that others look up to, you'll get there fast if you can qualify to join the Army. You'll see a change from the very moment you put on the uniform of a United States soldier. You'll not only stand straighter and taller, you'll walk with the sure tread of a man who knows where he's going. Your training in the Army will give you the confidence of a man with an important job to do. Of course, you have to pass the mental and the physical examinations in order to get in this oldest military service in our country. But once you're in... You're on the way up. So visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. There's a recruiter there who'll be very glad to tell you all about what's in it for you when you join the United States Army. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, The Big Blow. November 25th, 1950, a Saturday morning, Fort Monmouth, New Jersey, home of the United States Army Signal Corps. Hit the fastest you can go. This isn't weather for speed. You can say that again. What were you doing in the supply room? Checking out another blanket. Thought I'd never find you. Huh. What's this all about, Prem? It's a big hurry. General Lanahan has alerted the entire post. Everybody has to report to his station. It's on the public address system. Did you hear it? How oh, much had the door closed? What kind of an emergency is it? Nobody said, but it must be because of the storm. The radio said it was a hurricane. Does Vince know about it? How could anybody with eyes and ears not know about a hurricane? Oh, I mean about the alert. He took off two hours ago for the Spring Lake Hospital to give blood. You know that. I thought maybe he'd gotten sick. But he hasn't. Now, hike, soldier. The general isn't going to be impressed that you were checking out an extra blanket when he sounded an alert. It wasn't officially labeled a hurricane, but to the people who lived through it, the difference wasn't noticeable. Winds of 70 and 80 miles an hour lashed Monmouth County. Rain drove against the frail seashore cottages and bungalows. In South Amboy, citizens forced to evacuate their homes crowded into the high school. In Seabright, the police feared panic. In Spring Lake, the hospital staff was on edge. Dr. Fitch? Yes, I'm Private Vince Sable, the soldier from Fort Monmouth with ABRH negative type blood. I'll let you know if we need you, Private. Yeah, but Doc, this storm and all, I should get back to the post. Can't you let me know if there's any point in my staying around? It was good of you to volunteer, Private Sable. Hospitals have to rely on volunteer donors, particularly when rare types of blood are needed. I'm sorry if I was brusque, but Mrs. Peters is being wheeled into the delivery room now. Where's her husband? Can't you use his blood? He's dead. She's a widow. Oh. As far as I know now, we will need you. But I won't be certain for, uh, oh, ten minutes to half an hour. If you're worried about getting back, why don't you phone Fort Monmouth? I did. And? Couldn't get through. The phone is out of order. The lines must be down. <laughs> Relax as much as you can, Mrs. Peters. Although new mothers never believe it, babies are born safely every day. I'll try, Doctor. 
Where's that soldier, nurse? I sent the orderly to get him. We're going to give the transfusion I told you you might need, Mrs. Peters. It's perfectly painless. You'll feel much stronger after you've had it. Miss Gill. Did you get any candles? Yes, Doctor. I must admit, these sudden Jersey storms scare the daylights out of me. There's always the chance that the power will go out. The candles won't help if we need the incubator, Doctor. Or an oxygen tent. I know, I was thinking the same thing. This baby will be a premature birth. Well, all we can do is hope, I guess. Anyway, here's our soldier. Take your jacket off, Sable. Roll up your left sleeve. Mrs. Peters, this is Private Sable. He has the same type of blood you do and came all the way over from Fort Monmouth to help us. Very kind of you to come. How do you do, ma'am? Just lie down here in this next cot, Sable. Yeah. You given blood before? Yes, sir. Now, don't you worry, ma'am. A transfusion is as simple as falling off a log. I'm not worried. Well, we made it. Corporal Prima and Private Blake reporting for duty, Captain. Uh, get out of your wet gear. Then, Prima, you take the switchboard and tell Golden to get some breakfast. Yes, sir. Uh, and Blake, uh, make a check against the roster of who's here, then stick with me. Yeah. All right, Golden Boy, let a man take over. You have a date with the chef. Message sender, Corporal Prima. Just a minute, please. Captain. Oh, there you are. South Amboy wants 100 cots and 200 blankets. Uh, find out what they want and say we'll dispatch them immediately. Then get me dog company supply room. What do you want them sent, South Amboy? Right, they're practically on their way. Here's dog company, Captain. South Amboy wants them at Hoffman High School. Message sent Corporal Prima. Hold the line a minute, please. Did you put in a call for the Red Cross, Captain? Yeah, give it to me here. Uh, this is Captain Ahern at Fort Monmouth, ma'am. I just wanted to tell you not to hesitate to call on us if we can be of help in any way. Uh, the, the entire post has been ordered to stand by. We have cots, blankets, medical supplies, personnel. Oh, that's perfectly all right, ma'am. Thank you. Did you hear anything from Vince Bream? Not a word. Excuse me, Dick. Yeah. Board's lighting up like a Christmas tree again. Message, Santa Corporal Freeman. How do you feel, soldier? Like I said, as easy as falling off a log, isn't it, Mrs. Peters? Oh. Do your best to lie still and relax, Mrs. Peters. It'll pass in a moment. How much blood has she received, Miss Gill? Uh, nearly two pints. Better cut it off. Yes, doctor. And now, should I... Oh, the life, doctor. And doctor... And she's in labor already, doctor. Miss Gill. I've got matches here somewhere. Miss Gill, get the candles. Yes, sir. And call Fort Monmouth. Tell them to get emergency power here immediately. Oh, but you said the phone lines were down, didn't you, Sable? Well, I can find a phone oh. that's working, Doc. Uh, here are the candles, Doctor. Light them, please. Yeah, I found my matches, Miss Gill. Thank you. It's better in the light. Uh, Come on, Doc. Get this thing off my arm so I can get to a phone. You can't, Sable. Well, who says I can? You just gave nearly two pints of blood. You're supposed to rest a half hour afterward for each pint. And you're supposed to have an incubator or whatever you call it in working order for Mrs. Peter's baby when it's born early. Incubators work off electricity, Doc. Who else have you got to send who knows his way around this countryside? I thought not. Now get this thing off of my arm. <laughs> Mister, stop! The fourth one that went by. Oh, I'll stop this one if I have to lie down in front of it. Hey, emergency! Mister, mister, you've got to take me to a telephone. I don't care what brought you out in the storm. This is very important. You can say the Army commandeered your car. Now, please, head for the highway fast. Message sent to Corporal Prima. Dick, it's Vince. Okay, Vince, we will do. Now you get back to the hospital if you can. The boys will pick you up there. Motorpool, it's Captain Ahern. Dispatch a mobile generator, PE-95, to the Spring Lake Heights Hospital on the double. You short of men? I'll have it stop by here. I can spare you Blake. Oh, 
I got plenty of rain fall. The winds are plenty poor. Oh, hey, hey, driver, Charlie, stop that fence evil we just passed. Oh, hey, Fitz, am I glad I saw you. You might have drowned in the road back there. I'll be gladder when we arrive and hook this thing up to the hospital. Oh, what's it to you? Just a frightened lady I know, a young widow that's having a baby. The intervals are much shorter, Doctor. I can count, Miss Kim. Turn left at the next corner, Charlie. Now left again. Yeah, you can see the hospital in the middle of the block. Pull around to the back, Charlie. I'll meet you there. Hey, Vince, where do we stop? There's no time. No, no. I'll start running the line in. Come on, give me a hand, will you, Yeomans? Bring it in here, Dick, and hurry. <laughs> Generate a man in this unit. Charlie says he doubles up because the crew's short-handed. Well, you get back with Charlie then, Dick. Yeomans and I can splice this. We'll holler when we're ready. Yo. Come on, Charlie. Vince is splicing it now. Here, let me know if I can help. Turn her over! Here we go, Charlie. Oh, no. Don't tell me the plug's got wet. The electricity were on, Doctor. Please stand back, Miss Gill. Thank the good faith. Here he is, Miss Gill, perfect and healthy so far, anyway. Oh, he's darling. He's also only about four pounds large. Wrap him up as warmly as you can immediately. I have the blankets right here. Uh, Dr. Fitch? Yes. Will he be all right? I mean... We should put him in the incubator. Putting him in the incubator will do no good if we have no electricity to run it, Miss Gill. Frankly, I don't know if blankets will do the trick. He seems to be fighting for breath, Doctor. Curse, soul, New Jersey, storms, and... Let me have him. Blankets aren't too tight. Poor little fella. Well, we did all we could. Oh, the lights! Oh, thank God for the signal cord, Doctor. Amen to that, Miss Gill. Turn the incubator up to high, Miss Gill, right now. Dick! Charlie Yeomans! It's a boy, and he's going to be all right. You're heroes, father. Well, what do you think we ought to make him take, Charlie? An aspirin or a nap? Uh, I'm serious. Mrs. Peter's baby would have died if we'd cut the generator in a minute later. Was it really that close? Sure. Early babies have to get in the incubator right away, the doctor said. And, of course, the incubator wouldn't work until we got the generator going. Charlie kept trying. It caught on the third try. It just seemed like an hour. Oh, hi, Prem. Hi. We found Vince. That's fine orders. What well, brings you out in this weather? See, the generator's hooked up and the hospital lights are on. Is everything all right here? Oh, well, we're heroes. We saved a baby's life. Everything all right, Vince? It's fine, Prem. Okay. Charlie and Yeomans, you stay here and tend the generator. Vince and Dick pile in with me. A whole section of Seabright's in danger, and the captain sent me to get you there on the double to help evacuate the people. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, The Big Blow. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Here's something that's strictly about the birds. The whirlybirds, that is. Otherwise known as helicopters. Yes, sir, the Army's aircraft mechanics who repair the helicopters are among the most important soldiers in the land. And all because there just aren't enough of them. Their training skills are needed on every post where Army airplanes are flown. If you have the background to qualify as an Army aviation mechanic, now's your chance to line up a good job and a good rating for yourself in the United States Army. Even if you don't have the experience, but just the inclination, the Army will train you. You will be an expert after finishing the Army's highly specialized schools. See your local recruiter about your chances for enlisting as an aviation mechanic in the United States Army. 
You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of The Big Blow. All through that November morning and early afternoon, the storm raged on. Six people were killed. 60,000 homes were left without electricity. Property damage ran into the millions. It was one of the costliest disasters in the history of New Jersey. In the middle of it, dispatching a power unit here and a hundred cots there, hurrying 20 strong to Long Branch and 50 strong to Keensburg, were the alerted soldiers of Fort Monmouth. Few of them were busier than Private Vince Sabo. After rushing a mobile generator to the Spring Lake Hospital, which saved the life of Mrs. Peter's premature baby, Vince and his fellow signalmen headed by jeep toward Seabright, where scores of American families were helplessly marooned. Isn't there anything we can do, Jane? Well, can you think of anything? Oh, I'm sorry, Martha. I shouldn't have spoken that way. Are you sure? Lucy, we told you you can't go out. Can I just look? You can look from the window. Lucy, why don't you play with your dolls and look at one of your picture books? I've been doing that all day. You started to say, Martha. Well, I, I was just wondering again if it wouldn't be wise to try and get across the street to the Randalls. Their house is stone, It's Jane. too great a risk, Martha. Come here to the window. See, the street's nearly three feet underwater. We could wade across it all right if that were all. But watch. Suppose a tree, like that one, came boiling along while we were crossing. And look what's being blown through the air. Planks, parts of houses. Suppose something like that came hurtling by. It would decapitate one of us. What decapitate mean, Daddy? Well, Lucy, well, it, it means... to get hurt badly, dear. But but we can stay here, James. The, the, the walls are shaking and I'm, I'm sure the roof will blow off the... The water's almost up to the floor. We have to stay. Until when? Until the police or the military or our neighbors or somebody come to get us in a boat. But how will they know to come? We can't phone. The phone went dead early this morning. We, we can't blink the lights. We haven't any lights. We can't shout. A person's voice wouldn't carry 50 feet in this wind. Then we have to trust. Trust what? The humanity of mankind. Oh, I wish I had your faith, Jane. I wish I had your faith. <laughs> Rain so heavy, I can't read the road sign. Now you're headed right. Push her along, can't you, Preen? Look, if I go any faster, she won't hold the road. What's the hurry, Vince? I know this country. A lot of the cottages in Seabright where we're headed are nothing but wooden shacks. They blow down in storms like these. Oh, this is Vince's day for heroics, Preem. This morning he saved a baby's life. This afternoon he wants to save a town. Anything else? Maybe this sounds silly, but I want to get back to the hospital and see Mrs. Peters and her baby. She has no one to take care of her, and she... She didn't seem old enough or strong enough to be having a baby. Uh, I know what you mean. I think we'd figure some way of preventing trouble like this, wouldn't you? Nobody can prevent a storm, Dick. I mean, the trouble that goes with a storm. Well, it's a lack of communication that fouls things up. We have everything necessary to prevent trouble, but we can't use it if we don't know where it's needed. Like, like the Spring Lake Hospital. Nobody knew it needed a power unit till Vince commandeered a car and got to a phone. Wouldn't radio help? Well, it does. The police called us by short wave. Just before I left, the post opened K2USA. What's that? It's the Fort Monmouth station in the military amateur radio system. Signal Corps has an arrangement with radio hams all over the country to give and send messages in emergencies. Yeah, but even that doesn't help the average householder in a storm area. His set won't work if the electricity's out. And he couldn't transmit over it even if it did. Hold it, Bream. Here's Seabright. And there's our duck and weasel. Looks like they've been waiting for us. In army lingo, a duck isn't a bird and a weasel isn't an animal. They're both amphibious vehicles, strange but wonderful products of man's ingenuity that can travel in equal safety on dry land and on water. At Seabright, New Jersey, on November 25th, 1950... The Army amphibians proved to be not only wonderful, but also life-saving. Hey, there's someone waving over there at the right, Cream. Yeah, I see him. Where's Vince? He's in the back, covering the ones we've already picked up with blankets and cheering them up. How many we got, Dick? I'm afraid to take my eyes off my steering to turn around and count. Uh, 22. That's 22 evacuees. You and Vince and I make a whole load of 25. Yeah. Well, here we are. 
And no, and no, stay there. Stay where you are until we come for you. Oh, why are people so eager, Bream? They'll start to come out from their houses through this mess on their own. Over you go, Dick. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm over. Come on, Vince. Privates Blake and Sable have some rescuing to do. Martha, Martha, get hold of yourself. But, but it's so undignified, standing on the furniture of our own home because, because our living room floor is a foot deep in water. Wouldn't it be better upstairs, Dad? I'm afraid of flying glass, Lucy. Two windows have already blown out. But what are we going to do? Are we just going to stand here like this, clutching our skirts until the water rises over our heads? I've told you 20 times, Martha. Someone must be out in boats or something looking for people like us. Oh, you just say that to cheer me up. I say it because this is a civilized country. Everyone knows the cottages down here are flimsy. A storm like this isn't exactly a secret, you know. Oh, Daddy, I see Mr. Randall on his porch. Well, he should stay inside. Wave to him, Lucy, so he'll know we're all right. I already did. <laughs> kind of a square boat or something with people in it. Where, Lucy? Way down there by the Myers, see? Yeah, yeah, it's one of the army's amphibians. I think the kind they call a duck. You see, Martha, people do remember their neighbors. Oh, oh I, can, I can see it too now. Oh, James, Lucy. Daddy, he's turning away. Now don't be silly, child. It is, Daddy, it is, it is. I'll go up on the roof. I'll go out there and wave something. But, James, the broken glass, the wind. I'll wave my shirt. I'll wave my hat. Nobody's going to leave my family like drowned rats in a trap. You'd better head back to the trucks, Payne. I think we've got them all. Well, we've been up and down every street out here. We're overloaded now. I'd hate to skip anybody. This is the roughest I've ever seen. Well, but how can we skip anybody if we've covered every street? Yeah, yeah I guess you're right. Hold on to your hat, Dick. I'm going to swing this thing around. Yo. Dick, I can't get it out of my head that we might have missed somebody. Just to play safe, ask one of the evacuees if there's any area around here we didn't cover. You don't have to ask an evacuee. Hey, what brings you forward, Vince? I've been shouting at you, but I guess the wind's too strong. There's an elbow of Seaside Drive way down by the water that you missed. Huh? Last time I was down here, two years ago, at least two families were living there. Uh, I had a hunch we weren't through. But if we go back, it'll postpone your rendezvous with Mrs. P. Stop talking so much and push this thing along towards Seaside Drive. I'm sorry, Lucy. Daddy must be awfully cold up in the room. And Mummy must have been crazy to let Daddy bring us out here in November. That duck or whatever Daddy said it was will come back. I know, Lucy. And the storm will stop because we don't like it. I know. I've got to hold on. I've got to stay here till I see the duck again. I've got to be ready to wave the shirt when I see the duck. Vince, we can't stay out here forever. Yeah, go on, Freem. Go on to the end of the street. All right. But just this street. I'm I'm going to lie down, Lucy. Mommy! I've got a headache, dear. But, Mommy, it's coming back. Huh? The duck is coming back. It's coming back. What'd you say your name was? Queen. Jim Queen. You wait here, Mr. Queen. I'll be back for you in a jiffy. I can walk with you. You better wait here until I get your missus and kid out. Soldier. Yeah? God bless you. I, I'm overwhelmed. That's the only word I can use. Overwhelmed. Uh, it's almost as though the military and civilian authorities have been practicing for a disaster just like this. Well, in a sense, they have, or at least the military has. Any good military post is prepared for almost anything. James, look look around you. Lucy, you too. This is something you should always remember. I will, Mommy. Cots and blankets all over the auditorium. 
Well, more than enough for everybody. Why, there must be 200 of them. Well, they were sent here by the Army from Fort Monmouth, Mrs. Queens. They also supplied those lights because the Army rushed over one of its mobile generators. I know because I saw it on the way in. Oh, hi, Prem. Hi, Vince. You can add that half the communities in Monmouth County are being lit by signal core units right now. I finally got through to Captain Ahern, and he said every P95 power unit on the post is in use. How are your patients, Vince? Ask them yourself. Oh, we're fine. Is there anything I can do to help? No, no, thank you. The evacuation of Seabright has been completed. The wind has died down. The rain has stopped. The Queens' family says it's fine. Say, Bull, there's only one thing left for you to do. Yes, Sergeant? Take my Jeep. Get over to Spring Lake as fast as you can and see how Mrs. Peters and that little life you saved are doing. Get going now, here. Furnishing electricity to the Spring Lake Hospital and evacuating more than 700 residents of Seabright were only two of the assignments given the Army men of Fort Monmouth on that wild November day in 1950. The storm was severe, and it would have been vastly more damaging had Fort Monmouth not been nearby and alerted. The Army post supplied 850 cots, 1,750 blankets, and 10 power units to 10 suffering New Jersey communities. Eight officers and 104 enlisted men participated in the community work. At Fort Monmouth itself, ranking officers remained on duty continuously for 39 consecutive hours. The Army's work in the Monmouth County storm in 1950 was another example of Army preparedness easing a civilian disaster. A man with money to invest doesn't splurge it wildly on the first thing he sees. No, if he's wise, he looks around and then decides on a solid stock. One with a past history that's always been progressive. A stock with a real future. All right, let's say you're a young man, a high school graduate. You want to invest yourself in the best future. Well, the United States Army offers you the best opportunity for your investment. Your dividends will be high as you become a part of the world's greatest army. In travel, in schools, in scientific advancement and technology, you'll reap the reward of your investment. And even more satisfying, our country will share in a mutual benefit. Visit your local recruiting station today. Invest wisely in your future with the United States Army. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>